The senator from Ohio. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last month, the world lost one of its great champions for public health, Dr. Paul Farmer. Few people did as much to save lives around the world as Paul. He was a giant. He changed how the world thinks about international health, about international aid, and about public health. Millions of people from Haiti to Peru to Russia to Rwanda are living longer, healthier, more fulfilling lives because of Paul Farmer, because of the movement he launched. Paul moved to Haiti immediately after graduating from college. He had a special relationship with that country for the rest of his life. It's where he met his wife, Dee Dee Bertrand, a school principal and preacher's daughter in Conj. Even during, his, during Harvard Medical School, Paul would fly back and forth to Haiti, setting up his own clinic in an expanding network of community health facilities. In 1987, he and my friend Jim Yong Kim and their two colleagues, Ophelia Dahl and Todd McCormick, founded Partners in Health. They founded Partners in Health on Paul's radical idea. And it, it is a radical idea in so many ways that all human beings, regardless of who they are, where they live, that all human beings deserve equal dignity and equal health care. In 2003, the very good writer Tracy Kidder wrote a book about Paul and his life, Mountains Beyond Mountains. After his death, after Paul's death, Tracy wrote a tribute to him and titled it, He Wanted to Make the Whole World His Patient. And he really did. I met Paul on a trip to Haiti with my friend Joanne Carter, the executive director of Results, a grassroots organization's ded organization dedicated to ending the causes of poverty around the world. It was April 2003. Partners in Health was working in Haiti, and the hospital and clinic Paul started in, in Conj had grown to a broad network around the country. Paul and his colleagues were working with community health workers to treat drug-resistant tuberculosis and to scale up AIDS treatment in the most impoverished place the most impoverished place by far in the Western Hemisphere. In a time there was almost no antiviral treatment available in poor countries. People claimed that treating patients and getting antivirals out in countries like Haiti was just impossible. Paul proved them wrong. Partners in Health invited several hundred U.S. policymakers, journalists, and members of Congress over time to Haiti to see firsthand how they expand access, how they were expanding access to life-saving treatment. At the time, there was still a popular sentiment, even among health workers, we couldn't do this. It was impossible to get these antiviral treatments out on any kind of large scale in low-income countries. It was a transformational moment. Paul opened the world's eyes to what was possible. We would and had to treat patients everywhere. We could, we could, and, and, and we had to treat patients everywhere. The barrier wasn't that it couldn't be done, it was that no one had made it a priority. No one in rich countries like ours, or in even middle income countries, wanted really and tried to make this a priority. I remember we met a young man in a wheelchair uh, in a hospital unit. I was with Paul, he was caring for this young man. He had tuberculosis of the spine, it's called pot disease, and it's when the it's when tuberculosis bacteria, uh, when, it, when it migrates into the spinal column and causes paralysis. He was getting treatment that no one would have thought possible before Paul. We met HIV AIDS patients, saw how antiviral treatment uh, were transforming their lives. People called it the Lazarus effect. In a relatively short amount of time, this treatment revived them and brought them back from the brink. Late at night, we sat around together at Paul's little house in Conj, talking about what would come next, what we needed to do to rouse the world to action. It was an exciting time. The Global Fund had just been created. Paul's ideas were gaining traction. Paul Farmer brought such a moral clarity to all of these conversations. Whether he's talking to policymakers or public health experts or community leaders or to his patients, his impoverished patients often, he began every discussion with the same fundamental principle. Everyone has the right to quality health care. Rather than have a technical conversation, he'd look at all these health experts and leaders. He'd tell them when we say, unfortunately, there's just not enough resources to treat everyone, so we have to make choices. We're always talking, as Paul said, we make these choices, we're always talking about somebody else's children. He didn't, say it's, he didn't say it in any accusatory way. He wasn't judgmental. He didn't look down on anybody. 
It was simply how he thought about it and how he wanted everyone to think about it. The other thing that always struck me so astonishing about Paul was that he cared so much about each individual person. He had an, an, an uncommon, maybe even unparalleled empathy. He had an absolute commitment to his patient's care. He was a big thinker in change policy, but he was a practitioner up close that took care of fellow human beings. He had an absolute commitment to his patient's care literally right up until the moment of his death. He was talking about patients he was treating in Rwanda. He was giving advice right up until the day he died. Tracy Kidder reported that Paul had been up late the night before seeing patients. Mr. Kidder said in his experience for Paul, that was the equivalent up being up late seeing patients was the equivalent of a night on the town. Over the past few weeks since we lost Paul, remembrance of that em empathy had poured out from people around the world, former students and colleagues, patients, world leaders, public health luminaries. Everyone has a story about Paul Farmer's dedication to humankind, to his patients individually. They agree that Paul really did change the world. His legacy will certainly inspire many of us in this body. More importantly, will inspire people around the world. When I think of Paul Farmer, I think of one of my favorite passages in the, in the gospel, Matthew 25. And we're all familiar with Christians, certainly, but non-believers, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, uh, Muslims, I think, know this passage. When Jesus, Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was in prison, you visited me. What you did to the least of these, you did to me. And I thought, you know, that doesn't quite sound right what you did to the least of these, because I cannot believe that Muhammad or Buddha or Jesus or, or Maimonides or Moses thought that, that Mark Kelly is worth more or less than another human being, that all of us in God's eyes are equal. So I, I came across a friend of ours, lives down the street, a pastor, and she, she gave to me a Bible called the Faith and Justice, the, the Faith and Justice, the Justice and Poverty Bible, and it says this, when I was hungry, Matthew 25, when I was hungry, you fed me, when I was thirsty, you gave me a drink, when I was in prison, you visited me. What you did to those who seem less important, you did for me. Not what you did for the least of these, but what you did for those who seem less important. That was how Paul Farmer lived his life. He understood no human being was worth less than anyone else, and everyone, everyone is deserving of compassion, health care. Everyone's deserving of, as Rumi said, in generosity and helping others uh, be like a river in, 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 um, in uh, compassion and grace, be like the sun. That's the way Paul's fam that's the way Paul looked at the world. Our, th our thoughts are with his family, his patients around the world. We recommit ourselves to following the example of Dr. Paul Farmer. Thank you, Mr. President.